Hello everyone, Hex is here and today we are looking at Infinite Wars gameplay. Before we start with it, let me show you what I do to improve my spell tower damage. So let's see right now, uh, these are my current spell tower bonuses. My, my crossbow tower is maxed out, my ice tower is maxed out. I don't use the cannon tower so um, it's not important for me. Then when we come to the spell tower, as you can see right now it is 205% and it depends on our beast power. And the beast power depends on the level of the beast and also the level of the beast skills that you equipped. So right now these are not my highest level beast skills and I also have all four slots unlocked for my beast. So let's say, let's see what happens when I switch this to the ma the high level beast skills that I have, which is also my attack beast skills. So this is how it looks like right now. All of them are like 20 or 19 levels and uh, my beast is at level 26. So now when we go back in and check what our spell tower damage is looking like, it's at 220% and the beast power increased as well in accordance to that. So make sure that you switch your B skills in case they are not the highest that you have at the moment uh, so that you get the maximum out of your spell towers unless they are already maxed out in case it's not going to make any difference anymore that means your beast is at such a high level which is usually possible only for those old realms that have been active for all this time or somebody who is spending and getting all those beast experience points wherever they can find them. All right, so without further ado, let's go and check out my way of doing Infinite Wars. All right, so like I said in the, the Infinite Wars Combat Sendo video, I would only be using uh, either this blue buff, the one where it increases the, the value of reward after each wave, or this one where we increase the number of rewards for each wave. So today we will be looking. We will be trying for uh, using this uh, rewards amount plus one buff, and without further ado, let's go in there. Okay, so before we start, we will pause and then place the towers and develop them as we need. Uh, this is a nice trick to have, so that you can place a tower or upgrade it before the monsters are just running away from them. Uh, to increase the effectiveness of these um, towers that you currently upgraded or placed. Also, another thing to keep in mind that don't don't use all the resources at once to upgrade towers. Okay, so the first wave is done. Uh, we have not that great rewards right now in this wave. So. Uh, the flame spell is good to have however we will go for the the tower damage in the beginning also keep in mind that my my tower bonuses are already quite high so i don't need that many towers right at the start to be able to kill these monsters in each wave so in case you are having lower tower power um you might need to place more towers in there okay so again we have a really bad result from this wave, since uh, we are not getting anything good, I'm going to restart here. Again, putting up the buffs. So one thing to really keep in mind in each wave is that, that you're not using all of the resources that you get at once. So that you can adapt your strategy at the beginning of the next wave in case something doesn't go as planned or maybe the monsters come out at a different gate than you wanted so it's it's always good to have some resources in the in reserve all right this time we are lucky we got uh, the reward value boost right in the first wave and so i'm going to choose that so for me this is ideal since i already have cut some tower bonuses available so i would go for trying to maximize the output or the other rewards in each wave. So I already have one extra reward each wave and then now the reward value boost as well. 
So now let's see how lucky we are today in each wave uh, if we get the right reward at the right time. I will press a crossbow tower there so that it covers a large area like you see. Can uh, completely uh, attack all the monsters coming from the upper two gates and also the lower gate, which will be later hopefully. Okay, so here we are. The better choice is the flame spell because the others are not really worth it. Just getting a few resources um, won't be adding up towards the end. And so a flame spell which could be useful in later waves, would be a better choice here. The thing about these towers is that crossbow tower will always focus on the, the first monster that is coming at you. Um, then the spell tower would always prioritize the monster with the uh, within range and that is having the highest HP. All right, so here in our third way, we are lucky already that we get uh, that 12% uh, increase in resource rate. This is quite good buff to have. Uh, however, you need to make sure you get it or you choose it only in the beginning and not towards the later stages as only then it can be used to its maximum potential. Like you get it from the beginning itself. So you have more resources available to place uh, more towers or upgrade them. And uh, as you see, like on the third wave, after the third wave, we got lucky that the monsters now are coming from the upper gate instead of the, the lower one. So they take more time to reach our castle. And this is also a luck factor now that we cannot restart anymore before, uh, I mean, after the third wave. So sometimes I get unlucky and then get uh, the, the monsters coming from the lower gate. So again, we have the best option right now here is to take the resource rate 6% increase. I mean, the HP increase is also good. However, I think it's better to have a bit more resource available for uh, developing our towers. So I will choose the 6% uh, increase in resource rate. So right now, as you can see, I started placing crossbow towers only and uh, towards the, the, um, the bottom island where I would upgrade all of them to level 5. Okay, now in this wave, uh, we have a nice bonus. The 30% increase for all uh, defense towers. We will choose that one now since it is only the fifth wave and a spell is not necessarily important right now. I always try to keep the spells for the later stages like uh, wave 10 or wave 11 and sometimes wave 12 if I can make it. So the, the latest you can use or you need to use these spells is the, is the best. So that means uh, choose higher tower bonuses whenever you can in the first waves or increasing the resource like, like I did today. Sometimes we need to adapt our strategy to what we get. So here again, we could go for the 12% increase in resource rate, but I'm going to choose the 40% damage increase for spell towers here, since um, we only have 250% on it. Normally, I think uh, from what I've seen so far, 300% or more is ideal to have on our towers so that they do as much damage as possible to the monsters and kill them easily. 
uh, without us having to use any any of our spells too early in this uh, in the in the wave. Also, I choose where to place the towers based on uh, where the strongest monster is coming. Like you can see now that the, the, the first dragon is coming to at the bottom side. So I would upgrade those towers first so that they are getting more help killing it faster. And then we get uh, ready for the other dragons. And also these two spell towers will be placed to assist them to focus more on the, the higher HP monster. As spell towers constantly um, aim at the the HP I mean the monster that has more HP in their range and the crossbow towers will only hit those that are like coming first in the line so first come first serve for crossbows and the other the H uh, the spell tower will focus on the highest HP as you can see here all the time and this is why I use a combination of both of them so that uh, while the spell towers are busy bringing down the HP of the bigger monsters the crossbows will be killing the small ones since they are faster also. I have seen it happen when I use only spell towers that the smaller monsters just pass by pretty fast and it made me die too, too soon. So here I will choose the thunder spell. It's a quite useful spell towards the, towards the end as well. Uh, I wouldn't use um, the, the freeze ground which is an orange uh, buff that you, we can get sometimes because it stops the 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 whole field like it freezes everyone uh, that is coming uh, while the thunder spell can do some damage on the monsters when it is placed or where, where it is placed and also it only stops them when they are close to its effect range while the others can still move which means we could effectively use a reckoning spell right afterwards so that it has its maximum effect let's say so we keep upgrading our crossbow towers to level 5s and it's already the wave, 8th wave which means the monsters will start coming from the lower gate soon. And this is a compromise that I do, like I have two spell towers like that close to the castle so that we have more time to deal with the monsters that are coming from the lower gates instead of them just rushing through the last few meters close to the castle. So this is where I have use of my spell towers actually, where they can then focus mostly on the big monsters coming from there while the crossbows are busy with dealing the smaller ones as fast as they can. Alright, we get another 30% damage buff and we'll take it because we still have a bit of way to go to get to that 300% mark minimum, so to 70% now. And 290 on my spell towers and 270 on my crossbow it was now it all 300 I know that this is not easy when you are a new player and your castle is still developing to get that higher bonus so try to get it as much as you can in the beginning in the first few waves and then go for spells and most of the time the placement of the towers and what when do they when do you place them and in what order it can all affect the outcome of each wave on which ones you can kill and which ones you can't and sometimes you need to restart to make changes and see if that makes a difference you can always watch in what order these monsters are coming especially the dragons or skeletons that are difficult to kill and they always get delayed behind these smaller monsters as you can see while the spell towers are constantly attacking them they are not killing it but they are bringing the the hp down and then 
making it easier for the crossbows to finish them off. And this is only possible without spells, if our tower is strong enough. So right now we're so close to maybe losing that dragon, but actually we killed it. Sometimes you need to take a chance, and if it is not really looking good, then you can always quit and then come back to that way from the beginning. So that's still possible. In the past, you were able to just quit and then restart the Infinity Wars all over again. But that's not possible anymore that uh, Camel made uh, new updates to stop us from trying that. So as you can see, we're easily killing off these monsters in these waves without even using any any spells. Also, never upgrade these ice, tow ice towers beyond level 3. They are already covering the space that you need and they might do a little bit more damage to these monsters but I don't think it's worth spending the, the resource for it. Especially when we have the, these many ice towers are, are already laid out. Okay, what will we get? Oh yeah, nice. So we get a reckoning skill. A spell finally. I would always choose that towards the last wave if possible and sometimes I get it also on wave 4 or wave 5. I would always go for them. Um, sometimes I need to choose for tower bonuses instead depending on what I already have. So keep that in mind. It's a sacrifice uh, to make. And whenever I've done that I was also lucky to get the reckoning sp uh, spell again in the next wave. And another thing to notice, or that I noticed that one time I tried to put on the Reckoning spell as a, the buff itself, like when you start uh, when you start doing the Infinite Wars. And these times I actually didn't find any Reckoning spell in from the Wave Rewards. So it's also possible that they have this algorithm that they will not give you the Reckoning spell if you already equip them. So it's just an observation. It could be that I was super unlucky no matter how many times I try to find them. So right now we have one Reckoning spell, two Flame spells and a Thunder spell. They're quite nice already and I would try my best not to use them if I can help it before let's say wave 11 now, like that's when it gets more critical. However, now the monster are getting stronger and we they will start going through. Since our towers are not yet that strong, it's only like 300%. Ideally, I would like it to be 320, 340%. But this is good actually. This, this the, Today the waves are giving us rewards in a nice, nice order. So I expect uh, at least 35,000 points today. Sometimes you feel like, yeah, I was super close to killing that monster, however, then it went in just with a little bit of HP left. It's sad to see, and um, from time to time, it's a risk that we take. Just for the sake of maximizing the waves and the reward from the other round, because now it's almost at the end. And there is only so much HP that we can lose here. Maybe one of these monsters, the big ones, will go through. And um, yeah, I'm always up for restarting in case I mess up by using a spell at the wrong timing. And if it doesn't die, if it doesn't die or something like that. So this one looks like it's not going to die. I might try it. Yeah, no. That was too late. So I will restart here. Okay, let's try again.
always look at what's the range your towers have what is what is the current range they have is it worth uh, upgrading them to maximize their effect in the field so always keep in mind when you're upgrading it it's not only for the damage but also the the range that they can get so you basically i mean the idea basically is to use the tower in a way that it is effective enough for a long range so that you're kind of reducing the number or the level of towers you have and conserving resources like this unfortunately that went through I think we will kill the second skeleton. From the looks of it, it is super slowed down by this uh, smaller cavalry monsters that are coming in front of it because they they are in a bulk, so the monster can't move fast enough. While our spell towers are bringing its HP down quite nicely, and then the crossbow towers will finish it off. Okay, we are back at the big monsters in this round. They are super slow, however, they are also super difficult to kill. The lower monster will die for sure. The other one might need a spell again, but this time we will use it a bit early. Alright, I guess now, yeah. This time it will die because it stayed in that uh, flame spell effect range long enough to have the full effect of it. Now if we get a Reckoning spell again, that would be awesome. That's the perfect set I would like to have. And yes, there we go. There is also a Freeze Ground, but I would go for the Reckoning spell, definitely. Every time. So there it is, 300% on crossbows and 320 on the spell tower. I would have liked it the other way around, but sometimes you take what you get. Okay, the big monsters are coming. Wave 11 is a quite nice play, a nice wave to have. Like um, wave 12 is awesome. Like it's amazing if you can manage it. You will be for sure at least 38,000 by that time you, you get all of them killed. However, um, we probably won't make it today from the looks of it. Wave 11 itself has too many monsters in queue and here we used the Thunder spell already and as you can see the monsters are stacking up close to the effect and then once it's done we will be ready with the Reckoning spell to kill them all off in one go like that so we make most use of it. It would be very nice if we can kill at least one Minotaur from it, because we, there is still a wave of skeletons to come. And usually they are more difficult than do, to kill than the, the first wave. So here already we are losing quite a lot of HP in a row, like, we are, oh wow, we are, we are really, really down to just four remaining. And now we have to make sure that we don't mess up and be able to use all the spells at our disposal. Here I'm not going to take a chance, I'm already going to 
use that reckoning spell so that big monster is dead. And then I will try to upgrade as much as I can. Okay, we are at 36,000, not bad. It would be nice if we could hit 37. Or from the looks of it, those skeletons are too fast already, so we might not get to it. We might be super close to it, however, not breaking that 37 mark today. But it's alright, I'm happy with the results. And that will kill us now. This was already enough for me to get all the rewards, uh, all the items that I want from the Infinite War Shop, which we will see in another video, what I would like to buy and what I would recommend. So that's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new from it. And uh, like I said before, like sometimes our choices make all the difference. If I didn't let some of these monsters go in earlier and used a spell, it might have changed the outcome a little bit. Maybe I've gotten to the next wave or even at even 37k points today. So experiment with it and use these buffs efficiently and choose the 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 right buffs like this and analyze it okay what would you need more and see where that leads you to also let me know in the comments below what kind of scores they are getting these days and what level of castle you are having and which buffs you choose to initially to equip and also then seeing how how you get the um the waves done so see you in another video have a great day goodbye guys